Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good morning, Sunset Hotel. How may I help you? Good morning. I just saw an advert in the paper about your hotel. Where exactly is it located? We are situated on Sunset Avenue, north of the beach, close to many scenic spots. It is an ideal choice for travellers interested in sightseeing. That's great. Is there a vacant four-bed room? We'll be travelling with our two sons, aged nine and eleven, so it's best that we are able to stay in one room. Let me check. Just a moment. Um, we only have a few four-bed rooms, and I'm afraid they are fully booked at the moment. The earliest time available is August, but there might be some left in July. If a previous customer cancels the reservation. Oh, that'll do. How much would the room cost me? It's seventy-seven euros fifty during peak time, but the price would be much lower during off-peak season. Only fifty euros. So, if I book a room right now, is there any discount? Yes, we do offer a thirty percent discount for any reservation made one month ahead of schedule. It is a very reasonable price. That does sound tempting. Does the price include anything? The price includes two breakfast vouchers per room per day. You can use them at two different restaurants in our hotel. There's also a twenty-minute spa trial available, but you have to book it beforehand at the concierge or directly at the spa centre. Um, I'm wondering if there is a hair dryer in the room. It takes ages to dry my hair without one. Do I have to bring one? No. There is absolutely no need to bring that, for each room is equipped with a hair dryer. But I have to inform you that towels are not provided. You'll have to bring your own, or hire some at the front desk. Oh, I see. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. Before making a reservation, can you tell me a little bit more about your hotel? Sure, no problem. We aim to please our guests by providing impeccable service at all the modern amenities, trying to make them feel at home. In the lounge, there are a list of books ranging from contemporary literature to classic poetry. Free for any guest to read. There is also a games room offering a number of indoor games, including popular board games like Monopoly, as well as the beloved table soccer. A nice place to go on rainy days. Are the computers available in the hotel? I might have a few emails to respond to during my stay there. I am afraid we currently do not provide any for our customers. However, internet is available within our hotel premises. Just use the room number and the guest name to log in. That means I have to bring my own laptop then. All right. Um, because I'm travelling with my two sons, is there anything that they might be interested in? Yes, a popular activity here for children is collecting shells on the beach. Our hotel has a private beach. When there are very few visitors, you can take a stroll down the beach with your children and enjoy some quality family time undisturbed. That sounds nice. But you see, my boys really love adventure. Is there something more exciting for them to participate in? We do have bicycles ready for hire. You can cycle with the boys along the bush track by the hotel, which is an ideal place to explore the wonders of nature. But because there is only a limited number of bicycles, we apply a first come, first served rule. Got it. I think my boys would love it. How can I arrange the payment then? Can I pay by credit card? Of course, we take credit cards. Thank you. You've been a great help. My pleasure, ma'am. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. You will hear a speech given by a man called George Dyson about Northfield Sports Complex. First. You have some time to look at questions eleven to sixteen.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. On behalf of Northfield Sports Complex, I'd like to extend our warmest welcome to you all here this evening. I'm George Dyson, founder of Northfield Sports Complex. I am giving this speech today to celebrate a special occasion. We started the business exactly a decade ago, and today we have developed into a large firm with a sizable group of members. We've also been nominated the most valuable company by Green Town at the Yearly Business Awards, which will be held next week. As experienced and qualified reporters, you are invited here to experience and witness this historical moment of Northfield Sports Complex together with us. Situated within the campus of Greentown University, Northfield Sports Complex is a modern, refreshing and fully equipped facility for sports of all kinds. As part of its commitment to the local community, Northfield Sports Complex is available not only to school children but also to local residents. It offers a wide range of facilities including a 25-metre swimming pool, paved walking and jogging paths, a well-equipped fitness gym, all-weather pitches, indoor courts for table tennis, tennis and other sports, as well as a renowned skating rink. Different age groups can all find the right sports to participate in. That's why local residents enjoy working out here. As a result, natives here are healthier than most of the people within our nation. The whole town is very proud of having nurtured two world champions who were once both trained right here in our skating rink. Thus, it has become the ideal venue to learn to skate and have fun. But what I take pride in most of all is the skating rink that has stirred the interest of boys and girls here in local schools to skate. Since opening, an increasing number of pupils have been paying regular visits to the skating rink. A new yoga classroom with trainers will be open next month for mothers with babies. They can bring their own yoga mat and work out together with their babies. This will be a great way for them to get healthy and meet other mums. There will also be a brand new gym open to the pensioners in the near future. Just this month, a new swimming pool is open to all fitness levels with special offers for those without a job. Our complex is open daily from 8am to 9pm, except on Thanksgiving and Christmas. We intend to extend our business in the coming year. A list of equipment will be put up for sale, ranging from exercising equipment like cardio machines to sports recovery and injury prevention facilities. Within our complex, we try our best to avoid injuries of any kind. We train knowledgeable staff to guide our clients through correct workout regimens. For those who want to further ensure workout safety, they are welcome to apply to be a member of our standing committee. They are responsible for revising the safety guidelines and supervising its enforcement. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Now, I would like to introduce some of our most popular sports facilities here at Northfield Sports Complex. Our 25-metre swimming pool is the centrepiece of the complex, combining modern, bright and airy surroundings with fully up-to-date changing facilities. The pool is excellent for learning how to swim, improving techniques and, of course, competing in school competitions. It is also bookable for private functions, including pool parties, where lifeguards are available. Next, we have the only climbing wall throughout the whole town. Many would see rock climbing as a type of extreme sport, exposing great risk to those who participate. But actually, under proper guidance and with close supervision by the coach here, it is a perfect sport for the youth to increase their flexibility and strengthen their muscles. I have to mention our skating rink once again. As our most popular facility, it has been prominently featured in a TV commercial we've released recently. There is no other skating rink larger than ours within the whole nation. Also, our state-of-the-art gym is an inspiring place to train and keep fit in relaxed and friendly surroundings. 
The Techno Gym equipment enables our clients to measure their performance. If you book a one-on-one -on -one trainer, he or she might suggest a future training plan and help you train more systematically. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You'll hear a tutor and three students discussing their work. First you have some time to look at questions 21 to 27. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 27. Good morning everyone. Well in today's tutorial we're going to discuss the essays that you have to submit by the end of next week. Some of you will have already started them which is good and if you haven't well that's okay but you'll have to get a move on. So let's begin with you Simon. Uh, what's happening with you? Well, I've made a start on it. I researched the background quite extensively last weekend. I should get to the writing stage tomorrow with a bit of luck, and I'll get finished at the weekend. Uh, what are you writing about? I decided to look at the car manufacturing company Jaguar, examine the problems they had with reliability in the 1970s and 80s, how they dealt with it, and how it affected their marketing and sales strategy. That sounds pretty interesting. Any problems with that? At the start, I had problems getting information from that far back, but after rooting around in the library, I found some magazines which gave me information and also gave me references to find other stuff. It seems now the only problem is keeping to the 4,000 word limit. It just seems that I have so much to write about. It seems I'll need 5,000 or even 6,000 words to be able to cope. Yes, your essay title seems to me to be very wide-ranging. Would you think about cutting out part of it? How about looking at their sales and marketing strategy, but only mentioning the problems in the 70s and 80s and not going too far into it? That's a good idea. That will make it much easier to handle. By the way, how do you want us to hand in our work? Do you want us to drop in a hard copy to your office? You could do that, but I'd prefer it if you just emailed it to me as an attachment. You've all got my address. If not, give it to the secretary clearly marked that it's for me. Right, Jennifer, how about you? Uh, I've not really got going on it yet, but I have decided on a subject. I'll try and do some research during the rest of this week, and I should get writing this weekend. OK, uh, what are you writing about then? I want to look into how supermarkets use market surveys to develop their products. Uh, will you have enough time to find out what sort of things that the supermarkets do? You won't have much time for that. I should be OK. I've had a look in the stack system in the library and I found a magazine that surveyed all the UK major supermarkets and a trade publication that analysed the same things in Canadian supermarkets. Mm. Be careful about using their conclusions too much. The university takes a tough stance on plagiarism. Make sure you properly list where you get your information from in a bibliography and try and do your own analysis. Get going too as that analysis will take a bit of time. OK, thanks. You now have some time to look at questions 28 to 30. Now listen to the rest of the discussion and answer questions 28 to 30. And Melanie, how is your work going? I'm a bit behind, I'm afraid. I was sick all last week and the weekend with flu. I've got a subject I think, but I've not done any work on it yet. Is there any chance I can get an extension to the submittal date? The policy of the department is not to give any extensions unless there are extenuating circumstances. Do you have a doctor's certificate or anything? I went to the doctor's, but I didn't get a note as I didn't realise I would need it. The doctor will have a record of me, though, as I got a prescription. I'll go back and get one. Yes, do. If you get one, then there shouldn't be a problem getting an extension. 
Without it, though, you'll be in trouble. What subject are you considering, anyway? I thought I'd do an overview of the UK mortgage interest rates and their effect on housing sales trends over the last 10 years. I thought it might be of interest because of the huge increases of house prices over the last decade. Certainly an interesting subject, and it should be no great problem getting information, as this has been fairly well documented. It's a lot of work again, though, and you'll really need to get cracking on it, even with the extension, if you get one. Well, I've not got much time for the rest of the week, and I've set aside the weekend to really get to grips with it. Good. Now, is there anything else? That is the end of Section 3. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 4. Section 4. You will hear part of an Earth Sciences lecture. First you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon and welcome to this Earth Sciences Lecture. Today we are going to look at tidal waves, or more correctly, tsunami. Deep below the ocean's surface, tectonic plates collide, and every once in a while these forces produce an earthquake. The energy of such submarine earthquakes can produce tidal waves which radiate out in all directions from the epicentre of the quake, moving at speeds of up to 500 miles per hour. When these waves reach shore, they can cause enormous destruction and loss of life. Tidal waves are actually misnamed. They are not caused by tides. A more accurate word for them is the Japanese name tsunami which means harbour wave. They are also sometimes called seismic sea waves, since they can be caused by seismic disturbances such as submarine quakes. However, that name is not really accurate either, since tsunami can also be caused by landslides, volcanic eruptions, nuclear explosions, and even impacts of objects from outer space, such as meteorites, asteroids, and comets. Earthquakes, though, are the largest cause of tsunami. Tectonic plates cover the world's surface, and their movement can be detected anywhere in the world. Some areas of the world are more prone to greater movement, and it is in these places that the largest waves can occur. Large vertical movements of the Earth's crust occur at plate boundaries, which are known as faults. The Pacific Ocean's denser oceanic plates are often known to slip under continental plates in a process known as subduction. And subduction earthquakes are the most effective in generating tsunamis. A tsunami can be generated by any disturbance that displaces a large water mass from its equilibrium position. In the case of earthquake-generated tsunamis, the water column is disturbed by the uplift or subsidence of the sea floor. Submarine landslides which often accompany large earthquakes, as well as collapses of volcanic edifices, can also disturb the overlying water column as sediment and rocks slump down, and are redistributed across the sea floor. Violent submarine volcanic eruptions can create an impulsive force that uplifts the water column and generates a tsunami. Conversely, supermarine landslides and cosmic body impacts disturb the water from above as momentum from falling debris is transferred to the water into which the debris falls. Generally speaking, tsunamis generated from these mechanisms, unlike the devastating Pacific-wide tsunamis caused by earthquakes, dissipate quickly and rarely affect coastlines distant from the source area. Tsunamis are very hard to detect since they cannot be seen when they are in the deep ocean. The distance between two wave crests can be 500 kilometers, and because of this, the wave height is only a few feet. 
because the rate at which a wave loses its energy is inversely related to its wavelength. Tsunamis not only propagate at high speeds, they can also travel great transoceanic distances with limited energy losses. As the tsunami reaches shallow water, however, its speed decreases, but the energy it contains remains about the same. Instead of traveling fast, the wave rises high. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has set up a seismic detection system to monitor earthquakes and predict the possible arrival of tidal waves for Pacific countries. Boys at sea can also detect water pressure changes that can indicate tsunamis moving through the ocean. But when tsunamis originate near the shore, there is often little chance to warn people. Let's look at some examples of tsunami and their causes and effects. Some can be relatively harmless. In 1992, an offshore landslide caused a tidal wave of only about three feet high that struck at low tide. So Humboldt County, where it hit, got off easy with no casualties. On January 13th in 1992, a Pacific Ocean earthquake off the coast of San Salvador, registering 7.6 on the Richter scale, did not cause any ocean disturbance at all. However, a recent tidal wave which struck Papua New Guinea on July 17, 1998, was 23 feet high and killed at least 1,200 people. This wave was caused by a magnitude 7.1 submarine earthquake. On July 17, 1998, a Papua New Guinea tsunami killed roughly 3,000 people. A huge underwater volcanic eruption 15 miles offshore was followed within 10 minutes by a wave some 40 feet tall. The villages of Arop and Warapu were destroyed. One of the worst tsunami disasters engulfed whole villages along San Riku, Japan, in 1896. An underwater earthquake induced a wave of 35 feet, drowning some 26,000 people. Finally, about 8,000 years ago, a massive undersea landslide off the coast of Norway sent a 30-foot wall of water barreling into the uninhabited north coast of Europe. If this were to recur today, as scientists say it could, almost anywhere in the world it would cost billions if not tens of billions of dollars to repair the damage to coastal cities and kill tens of thousands of people. That is the end of section 4. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of listening test 4. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the listening answer sheet.